No night complete without some definitive answers. Ryan Wilson here for that to talk winners and losers on a week four. Ryan, we like to manifest positivity here on this show. So let's start on the winning side. Your biggest winner coming out of week four is who? Uh, the P word you use is positivity. I will go with pandering because you're a Bears fan. <laughs> let's go to Chicago where you're Caleb Williams. I'm not going to stop you. Had the best game of his career in the NFL and is starting to look a little bit more like what we saw at USC and before that Oklahoma Joe and Caleb Williams has been, if not a breath of fresh air, you certainly take the inhale and feel okay about it. And I think the ball came out on time more consistently today. And I feel like each and every week we're talking about the consistency with which he's playing, getting the ball out. Uh, got Keenan Allen back today. Here's the touchdown to DJ Moore in the back of the end zone. Not the first read in that concept. Not the first read. There you see it there. Linebacker doesn't get his head around. Uh, that's pitch and catch seven on seven. If you got to have a defender there, great throw there. Saw a throw leading up to this uh, to Kyle, uh, Cole Komet, excuse me, mm. the tight end in the middle of the mm -hmm. field, just over the linebacker's head. So you see that consistency happening from Caleb Williams. We didn't see the frustration we've seen in previous weeks from DJ Moore, and that's a good sign, obviously. And the offensive line, and you talked about this during the, the telecast, the offensive line has played better, and you'll appreciate these numbers, Joe, just to check us out on the graphic here. Caleb, 106 was his passer rating. He had three seconds before he was pressured on average today. That was number one in the league, which goes back to what we saw from the offensive line and also got a, a thumbs up or a fingers down from DeAndre Swift, who had a great game after being what we think was warned about providing more, and he did just that. You know what I think. You know what I feel about the four-game sample size. I uh, do agree with you that this was the most complete performance by the entirety of this offense, but good things leading up to this moment. I will contend it wasn't a pop today. I think that we've seen him grow to yeah. this moment. Maybe not as out of the box, ready to roll, make big plays as Jaden Daniels, but I will never argue with and you. And I should say one more thing. The I the said the Bears the winner. Mm -hmm. I got to give some credit to the defense as well. Certainly, and that defense continues to make a long runway for this kid to take off, and he is making movement in that direction here in week four. Your biggest loser in week four is who? Yeah, boy, let's go to the uh, <laughs> city of brotherly love where they have been lacking. And maybe it's the bugaboo of playing the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They played them in the playoff games and no showed back in January. They no showed once again to the tune of 33 to 16. They struggled to move the ball offensively uh, for much of that first half. And the, the score probably isn't even indicative of what we saw from that Eagles team. And I'm just asking, which Philly team is this? They're two and two and they could certainly be much worse than that. One and three, maybe 0 oh and four. Uh, they beat the Packers in Brazil in, in a weird game, if you will. And this team just hasn't seemed to click since Jonathan Gannon and Shane Steichen left for head coaching jobs, the defensive and offensive coordinators from a few years ago. And it just feels like one thing after the next. Baker Mayfield, we're looking at the defense ball out here, but Baker Mayfield balled out as well. Threw for 347. And, and here's a not so fun fact if you're an Eagles fan. Of those 347 yards, 100 191 of those yards were yards after the catch. Mm -hmm. Worst all week in week five among any defense facing a quarterback. So I don't know where you go from here. You're in a division where you either were the favorites or you're going to battle the Cowboys. And as we sit here, let's watch the commanders in first place. Do you feel, and it's a crazy world as we were just talking upstairs with a couple of Giants fans, did you see a world in which the commanders were going to be the team to beat in that division? It could be shaping up that way with the play of the rookie quarterback and Jaden Daniels. But I want to come back to this Philadelphia Eagles team because we know there's so much talent there. Maybe not at the moment missing those two wide receivers and that's been huge in the offensive game plan and production. But do you see a team that has the makeup, the character to pull themselves up out of this rut? Because if you're looking for a watershed moment, that matchup with the 49ers seemed to break them a year ago. That's where I see a team that changed in their I don't know, maturity level in the way that's they fair. present themselves on any given Sunday. It feels like Everything has to align for this Philadelphia team to walk away with the win. Do you see a group that could come back from nope. these sorts of games? And you laid out pretty much why. And look, I get that they were without Devonta Smith and without A.J. Brown. But here's the thing. By the way, A.J. Brown's full name, Arthur Juan Brown, one of the best names in football after Geno Smith uh, the third. But here's the thing. We've seen the Kansas City Chiefs win with guys who were hurt. We mm -hmm. saw the Chargers battle today against, uh, against a really good Chiefs team, and they took it down to the wire. So every team has injuries, so you have to find ways to win without those players and the Eagles haven't done it and you and I and Brian McFadden talked after that Falcons game in which Saquon Barkley dropped the pass and you and BMAC were whining about well the defense you, want, didn't, you didn't, wanted to go back there yeah, didn't you? the defense didn't want to weren't ready to go back out on the field on the final Kirk Cousins drive that tells me all I need to know to answer your question further proof of a team that is not built 
with the mental fortitude required to get through some of these right. attrition moments in a season. Still plenty of talent there. Still a division that obviously would be for the taking with so much football out in front of us. But what they put on tape this Sunday against Baker and the Bucks on the road, I get it. It's late September. The Baconeers? You're, you're starting, <laughs> very nice. You're, you're starting to feel fall in the air, and then you got to take a trip down to Tampa where it's 95, <laughs> and you're getting IV bags at halftime, but this is not a team that has been built to deal with any such attrition. Baker Mayfield built for everything as he has found his stride, and he ain't stopping soon mm -mm. as the leader of the pirate ship. Rosters continue to take form on That's My Guy. As we point out, give out a game ball and put someone on our That's My Guy roster. Ryan Wilson, you can go anywhere. You can take a coach. You can take a depth guy that stepped up. Who is your guy in week four? I'm going to go to, to Washington for the revenge game, actually out in Arizona. Uh, Commanders played the Cardinals. Revenge game of sorts for Jaden Daniels, who is my guy. Played at Arizona State. Had to leave there with his head hung low, make his way to LSU. Won uh, the Heisman and then became the second overall pick after a, a, an incredible ascent up the draft boards. And then Cliff Kingsbury, the offensive coordinator, went back to the, to the house in which he was once coaching and, and stuck it to his former team. And you said a moment ago, Joe, that uh, who could imagine that the Commanders would be in first place in that division you could well here's the thing I get a lot of things wrong I picked this team to win the division before the season and I feel pretty good about that a lot of other things I have concerns with the predictions I made but Jaden Day look at this 82 percent unreal uh, there's two names there I think those guys ended up being pretty good football players and again Cliff Kingsbury is putting Jaden in position to have success and you talked about not taking big hits as a quarterback we've had the conversations about Anthony Richardson not being able to get out of his own way Jaden Daniels slides when he needs to he's one of the most athletic quarterbacks in the league already he is pushing the ball down the field and cliff has put him in position to get rid of the ball and the running game is helping him out so check 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 and it feels like this organization resembles nothing of those dan snyder era uh washington commanders teams josh harris is the new owner they have a new coach in dan quinn obviously cliff kingsbury is doing his thing and there's a lot of reasons for optimism and look maybe Jaden hits a wall at some point yeah it ain't happened through four weeks and it's been a lot of fun to watch no walls in current sight and you stir something there within me because we're so focused on this rookie quarterback and the job that cliff kingsbury has done to put him in a winning position how about the job that dan quinn has done with a defense yes. that is lacking in talent after what they did at the deadline a year ago really coming up big on that side of the ball once again against a Arizona team that we're still waiting to see that team that we saw back in week two. My guy in week four? Yeah, who you got? Give me a guy who's got to be the guy. Xavier Worthy was special. Yep. Called upon to do exactly what he does. Hit the burners, run straight, catch football. And we might see plenty more of that in this version of the Kansas City Chiefs. Your one goes down, well somebody's got to be the one and it might be number one. Mm -hmm. Xavier Worthy you could tell, Ryan, they're ramping this kid up. He's going to be great in an Andy Reid offense, but he's got to be great right now if this Chiefs team wants to continue to succeed at the level that they are. Xavier Worthy is welcome on my roster because he answered the bell on Sunday and will have to continue to do so in the weeks to come. Absolutely, and you just ask, uh, are the Eagles prepared to face this moment? Xavier Worthy is. Rasheed Rice is down. We'll see for how long. Marquise Hollywood Brown is done. Isaiah Pacheco's banged up. Next man up. No concerns. You got your franchise quarterback. Eagles have the same. And you just throw it as far as you can and let Xavier Worthy run under it. Ryan Wilson, I got Xavier Worthy as my guy, but you know, you're my guy too. Appreciate you. Oy. And don't forget, each and every day, there's only one place to be for all your NFL needs. 24-7, 365. This league you love, we highlight all the good right here on CBS Sports HQ.